So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our first speaker of the evening. So Daniel Halpern is here with us tonight, and he is the CEO of Crystalline Medical. Daniel, thank you so much for being here tonight. We'll go ahead and get your slides up and let you begin. All right, we're, we're all set to go. Daniel, uh, I'll let you go ahead and take over. All right. Thank you, Katie. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to thank Angel MD for allowing us to present and each of you for joining us tonight. We are a Bay Area company focused on developing and commercializing our ViewPath Vascular Access Guidance System, which is a platform that was custom designed for safe, rapid, and intuitive vascular access for interventional cardiology, tonight's topic, and for many other interventional specialties. Next. Large vessel venous and arterial access is a significant need and represents a huge market with over 11 million procedures performed annually in the U.S. alone. The global market is estimated at two to three times this. There is large variability in access guidance, contributing to significant complication rates between 3 and 19 percent, leading to over $3 billion of unreimbursed care or $10,000 to $50,000 per episode of unreimbursed expense, even for minor complications. Ultrasound guidance is considered best practice for any large vessel access and has been strongly recommended by numerous medical societies and government agencies in the US and internationally for over 20 years. Despite this, Use of ultrasound to guide vascular access varies, average usage rates of 30 to 60 percent, and in many specialties is significantly lower. There are inherent limitations of existing ultrasound technology for vascular access. Next. Next again. Current ultrasound technology uses off-the-shelf imaging probes that are designed for a wide variety of imaging applications. They tend to be large and typically involve a two-handed operation in which the user manually aligns the needle into the imaging plane, either along or across the ultrasound beam. Such manual alignment of the needle requires substantial skill. The large size of the probe makes it clunky and unwieldy, making such fine alignments awkward. When placing the needle along the ultrasound beam, the operator has to align the needle into a beam that is often as narrow as two millimeters. Similarly, when placing the needle across the ultrasound beam, it's difficult to locate the needle tip, and the operator has to constantly scan back and forth until they visualize the needle tip. Some of the challenges of conventional ultrasound are summarized on the right. Our platform, ViewPath, on the other hand, is custom designed for vascular access and has four key features that enable operators of all skill levels, from novice through expert, to achieve safe and intuitive vascular access. Start. Our optimized ergonomics allows the probe to fit in one hand and makes it easily maneuverable. Our integrated device pre-aligns the needle so that the needle is always automatically placed in the ultrasound beam and thus manipulation is not required. This substantially reduces training time. Our wide angle forward view configuration allows advancing the needle under real time vision and advancing and observing guide wire deployment. Our user interface guides the user to the target with lines to show the needle and needle path. Finally, our needle release feature allows an operator to continue the procedure uninterrupted. These features, and importantly, our low overall cost of ownership, positions us very competitively with currently marketed point of care ultrasound systems. We deliver easy access to complex anatomy. Our initial user experiences demonstrated first in phantom, then animal and human femoral artery and vein studies, demonstrated average training time of five minutes, and average time from image to access was five to 10 seconds. Importantly, 
after the brief initial training, the actual access procedure was performed equivalent, equivalently between novice and expert operators. Separately, Stanford Emergency Department residents, after first time use of Sinosite and ViewPath, overwhelmingly preferred ViewPath, 73% excellent or good ease of use compared with Sinosite, 9% good and 0% excellent. We expect these early results to be more fully demonstrated in larger user preference studies planned for later this year. Next, we have received over $5 million in non-dilutive NIH funding to develop our technology, along with over 1 million in seed funding from ANGELS, Maryland State Technology Development Corporation, and family funds. This funding enabled us to create, test, and iterate successive working prototypes develop and then test a clinical version in experimental animal and first in human studies. We have multiple issued and pending patents in the US and internationally. We received FDA 510K clearance for our first product. Looking forward, we are raising funds to continue user preference testing in approximately 200 patients in real world scenarios and to use that input to make further upgrades to the hardware, software, and the plastic components. We are also one of a handful of ultrasound vascular guidance systems selected to participate in evaluation this year by the U.S. Army to determine optimal systems for military-based clinical trials or as a preferred system for use by the armed forces. Also listed above are just a few of the strategics that we target or with whom we have already initiated conversations. Next. Our team brings together decades of experience in developing, financing, manufacturing, launching, commercializing, and exiting imaging and interventional device opportunities. I just want to mention our founder, Ted Abraham, is clinical chief of cardiology at UCSF and has been involved in clinical ultrasound for over 20 years. Thank you. We're happy to take questions. Dan, thank you so much. Um, we're excited to have you here. I, I'm going to start with um, pile. And I'm just going to ask Dr. Coley to give us some initial thoughts about this new device. And then she's also going to ask you uh, our first few questions. Super. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for that presentation. And I was very interested and excited to see some of your data, actually. So as a non-invasive cardiologist, someone who doesn't do these procedures a lot, I was very happy to see this kind of a device come out there. Um, but I think my initial reaction to this was that in experienced hands, for example, a vascular surgeon, an interventional cardiologist, an electrophysiologist, is the added cost um, necessarily offset by the ease of use? Because many of those, as you know, are so used to vascular access that they are very comfortable with the two-handed using the Sonocyte device, which also has other applications. So I think that that may be something to consider in the sense of what would be the right location for this type of a device? Would it be a training hospital, an emergency room where they don't do a lot of vascular access, not necessarily the cath lab or the EP lab where we're you know, routinely accessing the, the blood vessels? Excellent question. Uh, we are teeing up uh, a larger 200 plus patient uh, user preference study uh, later this year. And we will look at structural heart, We'll look at electrophysiology, lead placement. We'll look at interventional neuro, uh, uh, for example, coil deposition in an ischemic stroke patient. Time matters. And uh, the expert may not be in the room. He or she may be scrubbing in or maybe down the hall. And uh, we've demonstrated that uh, uh, lesser skilled, mid-level mid uh, uh, you know, professionals uh, can do this rapidly. I, I think that's great because I think to your point, you, you know, the application of this could be more widespread in terms of vascular access if it became more simplified. But I, I was also curious looking at your data set, we, you talked about time to vascular access, but how about other clinical outcomes uh, like, you know, vascular dissections, risk of bleeding, pseudoaneurysm formation. Have you looked at those? Are you planning to look at those? Well, those are all uh, uh, components of complication risk. And it would be a mistake to suggest that it's all about uh, uh, guidance, but I would uh, um, 
I, w I have been told by some folks in the malpractice community that um, uh, it's odd that there have been decades of data and guidelines around uh, uh, the use of ultrasound, yet it isn't 100%, not even in the cath lab. Great, Dan. Um, I have several questions from our audience as well that I want to make sure that we get to a few of them. Um, what well, one is kind of the the types of access that this can be used for? Um, is it only for lower extremity access? What is the smallest vessel size you can access? And lastly, is this compatible with the micropuncture technique? So those are three um, questions from our cardiologists that are here with us tonight. I'm glad, I'll answer all of the above. I'm glad about the question about micropuncture because a great example of the problem in the cath lab uh, is uh, uh, in the, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, peripheral artery disease. If you have highly calcif uh, calcified lesion, hard as a rock, not only do you want to be certain you're in the right spot, but you want to navigate around that hard rock. Uh, and oftentimes those microcatheters are in fact used in peripheral cases uh, as well. So in terms of locations, we're talking femoral, we're talking jugular, we're talking subclavian. And if I can use a prop here, we have a 10 millimeter growing to about 14 millimeter transducer diameter, which is dramatically smaller than the next nearest competitor, allowing you to get underneath the clavicle and really have an advantage in following the needle tip all the way through and avoiding all the dangerous things that could be a problem. Um, so that is the existing product call sites, or, or I should say access sites. We have a second generation product in development, which is small bore and radio. Great. Um, and Dan, we have so many great questions that are in the Q&A right now, but unfortunately, we are out of time. I'm going to encourage those of you that didn't have your questions answered during this Q&A to join us um, after all of the pitches in our networking lounge, because that will be another opportunity to talk to Dan and the rest of the Crystalline Medical team about getting answered all of these additional questions. Thank you so much, Dan, for being here tonight. Um, we really appreciate hearing about this new device. Thank you.